I've got my mushroom coffee. I'm ready to go. Let's talk about mushrooms. Let's dive in. All right, we are talking mushrooms and cancer. Once again, I am not a doctor. Anything I say here should not be taken as medical advice. This is particularly important when we're talking about mushrooms because uh, different mushrooms will interact in different ways uh, that you definitely want to talk with your doctor about before starting taking them, eating abnormal ones that you're not used to eating. Uh, it's just a great conversation with your doctor to target your specific cancer and specific uh, cancer treatment. Make sure there's no adverse reactions. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the history of medicinal use of mushrooms. We're gonna talk about mushrooms and specifically cancer in more recent years. Uh, and then ultimately, we're gonna get to the practical part, which is the consumption of mushrooms. How do we, if we see the value in them, get them into our diet, into our system, uh, as efficiently and tasty as possible. But first, let's talk about the history of the medicinal use of mushrooms. So mushrooms have been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years. Uh, this image is actually, it's a woodcut image of a man named Shen Nong from the Tang Dynasty. Uh, he was a legendary Chinese emperor and is credited with uh, the invention of agriculture, uh, m many of our agriculture methods we use today, uh, herbal medicine, which is where mushrooms come in, uh, and a number of other things. Essentially, he tried hundreds of different herbs and plants to see what they would do, uh, and he survived, obviously, long enough to write about it. And so we credit him with a lot of the foundation of using things like mushrooms as medicine. So in more recent years, as the slide says, as recent as 2013, medicinal mushroom researchers have published more than 50,000 papers and 400 clinical studies. I say that to say that this is not a fringe science. In the natural world, you do definitely uh, approach fringe, unstudied, anecdotal science, or uh, the antithesis of science. So anecdotal information, mushrooms in particular, uh, do not fit that mold. So most research has been done in the Far East and contemporary research still mostly comes from Japan and China in particular. However, scientists all around the world are now increasingly contributing to that body of knowledge as they learn about the value of mushrooms. So at this point, we know more than 850 mushroom species with defined healing activities. So defined uses in medicine based on these 50,000 papers and 400 clinical studies that has brought that body of knowledge to us. So with that in mind, let's get into mushrooms and specifically cancer. So the medicinal use of mushrooms for cancer has been approved in China and Japan for over 30 years. It has not yet become any sort of foundational treatment in the Western world, um, but recent studies and results coming from all around the world are showing the powerful effect that specific mushrooms have on the immune system and cancer. Uh, here's a quote I'll read for you. This comes from uh, cancer.gov. Studies have examined the effects of mushrooms on immune response pathways and on direct anti-tumor mechanisms. The immune effects are mediated through the mushroom stimulation of innate immune cells, such as monocytes, natural killer sites, and dendritic site cells. Okay, this is cool. What this means is that mushrooms, some specific types, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later, have been shown to have specific immune response uh, stimulators that ensures that your immune system is as functional as we can make it, and remember, this is cool because cancer is foundationally a dysfunction of the immune system. And so anything we can do to bring health back to our immune system, to identify, to, to recognize and uh, battle our cancer is something that is valuable. Okay, so I think we need to ask the question, why mushrooms? 
Um, what is it the mushrooms do for cancer that, um, I mean, we know we just talked about kind of the, the impact that was studied, but what is it that's happening? And so just real quick, the complex anti-cancer potential of medicinal mushrooms are not only through inhibition of certain cancer specific processes or targeted activation of tumor specific apoptosis, but also through indirect actions such as modulation or enhancement of the immune system. So what this means is it not only has um, specific cancer reprogramming purposes. Remember in the heat videos, we talked about apoptosis as a programmed cell death. Mushrooms, uh, certain mushrooms have certain compounds that help initiate that process, but it also has the indirect value. Mushrooms also have the indirect value of modulating or enhancing your immune system. So if I lost you there for a second, remember, the important thing here is that cancer is fighting against your immune system. And so anything we can do to enhance our immune system to recognize and attack cancer is going to be valuable. All right, we're to the important part of this video. Now that we have that knowledge about how mushrooms work, how do we get mushrooms into our system? What are effective ways of consuming mushrooms to get these immune response beneficial results. So let's talk about it. First off, the simplest, you can eat your mushrooms. Uh, obviously, we all hopefully do this. Uh, maybe you don't like mushrooms and that's okay. Uh, but obviously things like salads and sautés are super classic way of consuming mushrooms. Those are usually gonna be like button mushrooms or maybe shiitake mushrooms or, or other types of mushrooms. But something I wanna, I wanna emphasize is, especially if you don't like the, the taste of mushrooms, you can do a lot of different cooking with powdered mushrooms. So like one that, that we've used, um, we have this maitake, uh, it's an organic maitake mushroom powder. Um, you can put that in, in soups. You can even get away with it in things like smoothies because it really doesn't hold the flavor of mushrooms in the same way. And so uh, it's a really easy way of adding the benefits of mushrooms to the food you're eating without having to deal with the flavor of it. I will add a couple links below to some, some brands and some specific powders if you wanna try cooking with it so that you can, you can give that a try. All right, the second way of getting mushrooms into your system is to drink your mushrooms. Uh, so I'm doing it right now, I'm drinking mushroom coffee. It's not too bad, it's kind of, uh, it's got some cocoa in there and it's really tasty and does not in any way, shape or form taste like mushrooms. So there are a few brands that we've tried that we really like. One of them is uh, what's up on the screen for Sigmatic. So we've got, um, we, we do their cocoa mix and typically then mix it with our own coffee that we make. Um, that's, this one's got a mushroom called Cordyceps, uh, but they've got kind of a whole line of different mushroom products that are all focused on drinking. So teas, coffees, um, kind of adding powders to, to other drinks that you have. So it's a really great company. Um, we have a discount code. They're not a sponsor by any means, but we do have a partnership with them and a discount code below. If you enter the cancer box at checkout, you get 10% off. We also get a little bump back to the business. Um, to continue our efforts in uh, producing content like this, uh, but also sending physical cancer boxes to cancer fighters who can't afford it. So uh, support the channel. Another one that I won't pull up on the screen, but I will just kind of come back to here, is one called Mud Water. So the can doesn't look like much, uh, but Mud Water is, is just a, another drinkable uh, product. Uh, but this, so they've got just kind of their, their basic line. This one's got lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, and reishi mushrooms. So four different types of mushrooms that are kind of at the top of our list of maybe most beneficial mushrooms, depending on your situation. And so uh, it's another great option. I'll add links below as well to this company to get this product um, because your taste might be different and what you're looking for might be different. And so this is definitely an awesome option to look into. But with that, the third way of consuming your mushrooms is supplementation. This you may have heard us talk about in the past. Um, we add a 
mushroom supplement to every cancer box that we send out. And so um, it's a really great way of, again, getting those compounds, the, the parts of mushrooms that um, have these benefits into your system without having to eat it, taste it, and often in a lot higher doses than you'd be able to get reasonably in a diet. And so um, the one that we add to our cancer box is turkey tail, also known as Coriolis. Uh, let me, uh, I just realized I, I didn't come back to the presentation, that's fine. So um, in supplementing your, your mushrooms, we, we do turkey tail. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. Let me just, okay, yeah. So a brand that we really like is called Host Defense. Uh, they just have a really high standard for quality and are kind of maybe what I'd call leading the way in mushroom supplementation and um, having just a really high standard for quality. And so um, they're a great option. I'll add links below as well to all of these because we want you to uh, get access to what we've learned and what we have access to because yeah, what we found is it also makes us feel great. So, all right. And the last way of getting mushrooms into your diet uh, and into your system, you can actually grow your own mushrooms. I, I think people don't really realize that. We didn't know this until a couple years ago. Um, there are a number of companies where you can purchase what they call a mushroom log and they've already essentially seeded that log. And so you put it in uh, an indoor environment, you spritz water on it every couple days, and it will grow the mushroom that, that you purchased. And so you're getting the most fresh access to, to these different types of mushrooms. So a couple of just examples here. Um, sometimes they look a little more like uh, in, a, in a plastic bag, like the one on the left, and then on the right, you know, obviously maybe a little more gimmicky is it, it is more log-like, like truly log-like. Um, but you can get a number of different types of mushrooms in this way. Uh, and it's just a, a fun, especially if you like gardening or having an herb garden, have a little mushroom garden as well and uh, get that into your normal diet if that's something that you think would be beneficial. So a couple links below to some log options as well. Um, we actually did this. It was it was more the style of the one on the left here. And so I'll also link a video. Or actually, I'll put it right here or right here, whichever. I don't know which side the link goes on. Um, but I'll link right here to a mushroom log unboxing video that we did a couple years ago. And so you can get a, a little bit of the feel for that. All right. And that is it that we have for today. Uh, next week, we're going to talk in much more detail specifically about the top four mushrooms for cancer. This is just our assessment and, and learning from research. And we'll talk about specifically what they are and what they do. And so stay tuned for that because this was more generally about mushrooms. That will be very specific into four types of mushrooms and uh, more of the science behind it. So stay tuned for that. If you're watching this, you know, in the future and that video is already out, uh, we'll link it below. Otherwise, be safe, be blessed. Let us know if you have any other questions or topics you'd like us to cover as we continue to grow out this platform.